Hey, how's it going guys? Chris here, going over another one of those guns in Battlefield 1. And today we're going to be checking out an Assault Class weapon from the Turning Times DLC, the Rapid Firing Machine and Pistol M1912 P16, a ridiculously deadly machine pistol that you really wouldn't want to be up against in a one-on-one -on -one duel. So the M1912 P16 was basically a machine pistol carbine variant of the Steyr Han, aka the repeater pistol M1912 that you can find under the support class as a sidearm. And unlike the standard M1912 pistol, the P16 could fire in both semi and fully automatic modes, with the user being able to swap over the gun's fire mode via a switch on the right side of the frame, just above the trigger. The weapon was chambered for the very same 9x23mm Steyr cartridge that was designed specifically for the earlier M1912 Steyr hand pistol, and it even used the same 8 round stripper clips, but the P16 variant had doubled the ammo capacity, being able to hold two clips within that extended 16 round internal magazine built into the gun's grip. It also featured its own detachable wooden shoulder stock for extra stability, and to basically help prevent the pistol from flying all over the place in automatic fire, which would have been pretty vital for the practicality of the weapon with it having such a rapid fire rate, as it would have been extremely hard and probably almost impossible to stay on target without the support of a stock. In 1911, Austrian weapons manufacturer Steyr started to develop a semi-automatic military pistol which would be used by Austro-Hungarian forces the year later and throughout the duration of World War I, the M1912 Steyr Han. The pistol was considered to be a strong, durable and effective sidearm for use within those muddy trenches, and it became a pretty popular gun, being made in large numbers, leading right the way up to the end of the war. Now, when Austro-Hungarian troops came up against the fully automatic Italian Villa Perosa during mountain warfare, they were very impressed with its extreme rate of fire and decided that they also needed weapons which could match up to those insane kind of speeds, so it didn't take long before they started further developing some of their already existing weapons to try and compete. Along with the Frommerstock pistol getting a fully automatic upgrade along with its own dual wheel mount, the Repeater pistol M1912 also did too. This modified P16 variant was painted in early 1916 and issued to some assault units and aircraft crews for emergency landings in hostile territory though it wasn't manufactured in very large numbers, making it a pretty hard weapon to come across today. As it turns out, it seems that the Austro-Hungarians were quite obsessed with trying to invent a weapon that could beat the Villa Perosa at its own game, and if you think having a machine pistol that could fire up to 1200 RPM isn't quite overkill enough, then try doubling that firepower by making a stock which housed two P16s at the same time. This mount was known as the Double Pistol M12 and basically copied the idea of the Villa Perosa having two separate weapons working together as one ultra-powerful unit, though only a handful of these dual pistol mounts were actually made before the idea was scrapped. If you want to unlock your own rapid-firing machine and pistol, then you're first going to need to own the Turning Tides DLC and have that installed, and then, just like with the other DLC weapons, you'll have to complete a couple of specific assignments. Fortunately enough, these said assignments are quite easy and probably shouldn't take too long to do as the first one requires you to get 50 kills of the Automatico Storm variant, not exactly a difficult task, and the second challenge requires you to destroy 5 boats with the AT rocket gun, which can be done really quickly by playing on the defending side at the start of the Gallipoli operation on Cape Hellas. Just aim for those landing crafts and blow them out of the water as soon as they approach the shoreline, which should take about 3 direct hits to do. Do this 5 times and the M1912 P16 will be all yours, and you'll be able to find it under the Assault class when it's finally unlocked. But anyway, time to check out those stats. The P16's bullets steal a pretty moderate amount of damage when compared to the other Assault Class weapons. It's got a maximum damage of 26.5 up to 11 meters, which will then start to decline over distance, eventually reaching the gun's minimum damage of 15 beyond 37 meters. So if we compare these figures to the other Assault guns, it's basically got the exact same damage output as the Hell Regal, killing in the same number of bullets, for up to 12 meters, but possibly up to 7 further away. Although it dishes out a tiny bit less close range damage than the MP18 and SMG-0818, which both deal 28 in CQC, this still puts you on par with them when it comes down to the number of rounds you'll need to kill an opponent. And the gun also hits a little bit harder than the Automatico, allowing it to kill in one less bullet over all distances, basically making it a more powerful and probably more effective gun to use for bringing enemies down quickly. Unlike the MP18 though, because a headshot up close is only going to deal about 45 damage, the P16 won't be able to kill quicker if one of those 9mm rounds happens to hit them right in the face. 
Not that lining up headshots is exactly a very important thing to do, as the gun's already capable of slicing through a target up close anyway. But I guess headshots could still be useful for speeding up that kill time, if said target has already taken a bit of damage first. The blatantly obvious thing that we can gather from using the machine and pistol is that it's another rapid fire and assault weapon that seems to have anger management issues, being a bullet hose that can blast out lots of metal in a very short space of time. Just like the Automatico, the P16 fires at 900 RPM, which is pretty damn fast when you compare it to the other assault guns, and because it can kill in one less bullet than the Automatico, this gives it some of the most insane kill times in the game, being able to drop targets in close quarters quicker than most other weapons. You're still going to be outmatched by a quick buckshot blast to the chest, so shotguns have still generally got a slight advantage for putting targets down hard and fast in CQC. But as far as the automatic weapons go, the B16 is one of the best in the business for quick fire kills. But there's no denying that the speed advantage makes the P16 a very dangerous and usually effective weapon to use in close quarter gunfights, being able to drop an opponent in a duel before they even know what hits them but it's not exactly got a very fast muzzle velocity, with its bullets flying through the air at 350 meters per second, the slowest of all of the automatic assault weapons. And amongst other things, this limits its ease of use over those longer distances, further grounding it into being a close quarter gun only. If you switch the P16 over to its semi-automatic firing mode, you essentially have a pistol that can fire as fast as you can tap that trigger. And because it technically is a pistol, well, pistol carbine, it's also got a faster deploy time than most of the other primary weapons in the game matching up to the Frommer's top auto's deploy time of just half a second. This makes it a much better gun for switching to and from sidearms and gadgets, which is definitely a useful thing to know for survivability, as you'll often need to rely on secondary weapons in order to stay alive, especially whenever the machine and pistol's magazine runs dry, which is all the bloody time. With great power comes great kick, and forcing those bullets out at such an alarming rate causes the P16 to fly all over the place, even though it has that shoulder stock to supposedly help increase stability. With a vertical recoil value of 0.768 and a horizontal recoil value of 0.48, the gun basically kicks like a really pissed off mule, having some of the most violent recoil figures of all of the automatic assault weapons, and it's going to be about as accurate as the automatic of Storm variant, but not quite as easy to control. With prolonged fire, the machine and pistol often becomes a very difficult gun to handle, especially if you're trying to keep those iron sights on target with an enemy player beyond point blank range. Though because the gun kicks upwards a hell of a lot, dispensing a huge volume of bullets in such a short amount of time, this does sometimes go into your favour, with the line of fire often gravitating upwards to your opponent's head, potentially killing a weakened enemy quicker in a flurry of shots. So at least that high vertical recoil might come in handy for something. Unfortunately though, just like the Automatico, the P16 has also been given a pretty savage first shot multiplier of 2.5 times, which essentially renders its semi-automatic capabilities almost useless, further denying it as being a useful weapon for any kind of range beyond up close and personal. It's not quite as harsh as the Automatico's Trench and Storm variants first shot multipliers, with those being a tad worse, but it's still enough to make the P16 a fairly bad tap and burst firing weapon as a whole putting quite a lot of pressure on you to kill your target within that first spray of bullets. But with that said, burst firing is still usually more effective than mag dumping if you're taking on someone a bit further away, so you'll often have to decide whether your target is close enough to go down by a quick spray of bullets, or whether you'll need to tap the trigger a few times to get those shots to land. Because the gun doesn't particularly have terrible hip fire spread values, it can often be best to bypass aiming down those sights and shoot straight from the hip instead giving you an even quicker response time and extra manoeuvrability, often allowing you to get the drop on a close by target before they can even think about trying to take you out. Although the machine and pistol's got that extended magazine, allowing it to hold twice as many shots as the standard semi-automatic pistol variant, having an ammo capacity of just 16 rounds still isn't exactly amazing especially considering you can lose all of those rounds with just one short pull of the trigger, and unfortunately you're not going to get very far having just 16 bullets at your disposal. It's enough to comfortably kill a couple of enemies in a gunfight, but you'll struggle to take on many more, forcing you to reload soon after dispensing all of those rounds. And although the P16 has more power, shooting and killing a bit faster, the Automatico is still technically capable of taking out more enemies per reload due to its larger magazine. 
To add a bit more salt into the wound, the worst thing is, the gun's got some of the longest reload times out of all of the primary weapons in the game. So not only are you having to reload after every kill or two, but it's also going to cost you quite a bit of time whenever you do, leaving you extremely vulnerable. To reload the gun from empty, it's going to take about 4.1 seconds to slot another two 8 round clips back into that magazine, but a tactical reload can take anywhere between 2.3 to 6.7 seconds. It's quicker to reload in multiples of 8 to avoid having to top the gun up with individual bullets, so it can often be better to fire off a few remaining rounds to cut down the reload time by a couple of seconds. The reload cancelling is also a very good tactic to get used to whilst using the machine and pistol behind enemy lines. To put things into perspective, it's actually quicker to reload 31 bullets back into the MP18 and 24 bullets back into an Automatico than it would be to reload one individual cartridge back into the P16, with those weapons both having quicker tactical reload speeds. So this just goes to show you how crappy the gun really is at handling with ammunition, and if you reload with just one bullet left over in the P16's magazine, then it'll take even longer than most of the support's LMGs. Not exactly a very useful trait to have when you're up on the front lines surrounded by a bunch of enemy players. So in conclusion, the machine and pistol M1912 P16, or as I like to call it, the Brat Brat Pistol, is basically the ultimate duelist gun for shredding through close range targets and comfortably being able to beat opponents in one on one gunfights in CQC. It puts all of its eggs in one basket, giving the user access to a combination of decent power and extreme speed, translating over to some of the craziest kill times in the game, thus making the pistol a very effective deadly killer machine in the right hands. But although it's more powerful than the Automatico, what the gun gains in brutality, it lacks in other areas, such as its ability to take on multiple enemies and consistently deal with those hectic situations you might get thrown into. As although you've got a lot of power in your hands with a fully loaded P16, when that power's been spent, it gets shifted into your enemy's favour, leaving you open and vulnerable to attack. For this reason, it can be a very unreliable and often tricky weapon to survive with, and it'll really test your ability to get to grips with its fierce behaviour, as it can be a pretty wild beast to try and tame sometimes, being the unforgiving skill cannon that it is. Although you can usually mow down a target with ease, you'll often struggle to stay alive up in the front lines within the gun's optimal range, and you'll have to hunt down cover, revert to sidearms and dodge incoming fire in between those kills, trying to deal with multiple targets while seeing those lengthy reloads out. Having only 16 rounds isn't exactly a lot to get the job done, especially when you bump into a squad of enemies chilling around the next corner. And because the gun throws a bit of a tantrum every time you squeeze the trigger, by having such an erratic recoil pattern, it's very likely that some of those 16 rounds are going to stray off target, giving you even more of a problem. It's definitely not the most dependable or well-rounded assault gun in the game, often leaving you in a few awkward situations with your tail between your legs. But providing you can account for the weapon's negatives and take advantage of its positives, sticking to the shadows, learning to master the reloads, gaining ground on your victims before laying waste, and most of all, being aggressive but careful at the same time, you can really give the enemy something to fear, shredding through targets at tremendous speeds and coming out of most close range battles victorious. So that's it for another one guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do, and if you've not subscribed yet, now's the perfect time to do so. But anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll be seeing you in that next episode.